How is CER best communicated to physicians, payers, and patients? One really good way of communicating CER to the in parties who are most interested and most able to use the information is through a process of academic detailing where um, academic and other uh, expert clinicians um, unrelated to, uh, with no financial interests in the product one way or other, get together and, and, and look at the totality of the evidence and um, develop uh, evidence-based recommendations and guidelines for how to implement the CER studies and findings in a way that will most optimally be useful to patients. Have you seen physicians and payers being collaborative in this type of uh, setting? Absolutely. I think that physicians and payers are, um, are both, uh, both have the same goal in mind, which is the proper care of the patient and the, um, the closing of the gap between actual prescribing practices, um, which as we all know uh, in some cases can not necessarily follow the evidence, and um, the optimally evidence-based prescribing practices. And I think that um, you know, that ultimately will lead to um, the best outcomes in patients. And so physicians and payers um, are definitely on the same team in trying to make that happen. And, and I think that that's why both of them um, require comparative effectiveness research in order to try to figure out the best ways of um, the, the most effective and most cost-effective ways of treating patients um, and should be uh, working together to try to implement those, um, the results from those studies um, as well as possible. How much responsibility do patients have as far as their role in CER? I think the patient responsibility um, is, is a huge one. I mean, it's really hard for patients sometimes. They have a lot of um, competing um, demands on their time, a lot of competing demands on their resources, um, and it's hard for patients to, you know, for example, take a pill for cholesterol um, based on the prospect that, you know, sometime 10 or 20 years down the road, taking that pill uh, religiously might actually reduce their chances of having a, a heart attack. It's hard to sort of internalize that, uh, that immediacy in the, in the present day. But it's, it's really important to engage patients in um, implementing comparative effectiveness research. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's important to ensure that patients are, um, understand why they're taking the drugs that they're taking, um, understand what the uh, rationale for the studies were showing um, the utility for one drug or other, talking with them about, um, about the costs of their um, their care and what we can do to try to you know reduce the cost of their care while still um, maintaining the best evidence-based prescribing practices. Doing those sorts of things, um, evidence has shown, studies have shown, will go a long way towards improving patient adherence to their medications. So, I mean, I think is there are a lot of different social, cultural, economic factors that go into um, the trouble that patients have uh, maintaining their um, adherence to, to essential treatment regimens and, and I think that um, physicians and, and providers should do um, you know whatever they can to try to address those factors and and use comparative effectiveness research um, you know when it shows that uh, that that some drugs are better than other drugs and you know use that information in collaboration with patients so that you know they understand the rationale for their for their care